my channel. Today we're gonna do something slightly different. We're gonna do some like faux upholstery. I say faux upholstery because um, I'm gonna be upholstering the chairs in my dining room and living room that have been professionally done maybe in the, like the last decade and I think if I were to do them permanently my nan would have me hung, drawn and quartered. So we're gonna make this semi removable. But let me show you what we're working with today. I've got two of these lovely purple mid-century modern chairs. I actually really like the purple color, but they just don't really go with like the pink that I've got going on in the rest of the house. Like I said, I don't wanna damage them. They've been upholstered very, very nicely, but I wanna give them a bit of a refresh. And I've also got this small egg chair in the same fabric, and I thought I could do this one too so that it can kind of tie in better with the sitting room. I thought about making covers for the chairs, but some of them are actually quite fiddly in shape, and I had flashbacks to making the covers for the seat cushions for my Lloyd Loom chairs in the summer, and I didn't want to, quite frankly. I also want to show you that it's quite easy to reupholster something with a simple shape if you have zero sewing skills whatsoever. We're going to do this in quite a simple way. You just might need to know how to do a very simple stitch by hand, but if we need to do that, I'll show you later. We're going to fake it till you make it here today, which is essentially what I've been doing on this YouTube channel since 2012. Jack of all trades, master of none. So let me show you what we're going to be using for today's project. <laughs> These are the fabrics I'm working with today. I love this pink one. I wanted to go for a boucle type of effect. Yes, I did. Just double check boucle. that I'm saying that right. But boucle seems to be really, really on trend at the moment. And I did pop into the haberdashery to look for a sort of faux shearling and they didn't have any. I found some in Dunelm, but then I actually found these blankets in Dunelm and they were so much cheaper. Admittedly, this one has more of a shearling look than this one, but I've seen how these blankets wear and it, it will kind of turn out to look like this after a while. So that's what we're doing. If you want to know, these are the teddy bear blankets. This one was eight pounds and it's a small size. This one was the large size and it, I think it's double lined. So we're gonna cut the fleece off the other side. But uh, this one I think was 18 pounds. I picked these fabrics because they're super sturdy and I think they'll be really forgiving if we make any mistakes, which we probably will. So you're also gonna need some scissors, some pins and a staple gun. May or may not have to use this. We'll figure it out later. I actually don't know what I'm doing yet. Just bear with me. So let's take you up to my office and get started. The first thing I did was lay out the blanket on top of the chair. There was just enough fabric to cover this chair perfectly. And once I'd done that, I added a few staples into the base of the chair right at the very front. I wanted this area to be the crispest and the cleanest looking section. So I focused on making sure it was nice and straight and tight. And then I flipped the chair back over and I tucked all around the cushion. I thought I might have to add a little bit of extra reinforcement so it wouldn't come out, but it's actually really firmly stuck in there. So I was pretty pleased and I just kind of left it like that. So as you can see, the first step is done. This was so simple, it took me about five minutes. I tucked and stapled this section to the base, which will be removable with a staple remover if I want to one day. And I tucked the fabric all the way down the sides. As you can see, there are a few lines where the shape is very curved. There's not much I can do about it, but when I pull the fabric tight and staple it on the other side, it should look a little bit better. I'll be putting a cushion there anyway, so it's not too bad. My main concern is like these bits. I'm gonna have to do some cutting and some folding, but let's focus on the back and sides to make sure that's gonna stay in place first. With the back, I did pretty much the same thing as the front. I pulled the fabric nice and tight and stapled it first in the middle to make sure it wasn't going to be wonky on either side. And then I pulled and stapled between both of those legs to get it nice and tight. So I've done the back. I'm now gonna work on the sides, but as you can see, I've got this excess of fabric here. Once I've done the sides, I'm gonna try and cut it off and sew it together. <laughs> what I'm trying to do here is just let it hang and then sort of let it flow naturally and then I'll deal with this. 
And once again, here's just a little montage of me pulling, stapling, and tucking the fabric to make sure that it was in place. This fabric is so forgiving that if there were little areas that weren't quite perfect, it didn't really matter, which is why I recommend a nice thick fabric like this. And with the right side and the back done, I was able to pull that fabric at the back really tightly to create a seam. And I pinned it in place with a few sewing pins to make sure it wasn't gonna go anywhere. And then once that was done, I was able to cut off a lot of that excess fabric so that I could see what I was doing when I went in and sewed it. Okay, so this is what we have at the moment on one side. I'm gonna repeat this on the other side over there. But before I do that, I am gonna stitch it. I'm gonna use a hand stitch and just go all the way down and just try and blend the fabric pieces together so you can't really see the seam. I've got about an inch of seam allowance to play with just in case I need it. Forget what I just said. I actually ended up going and cutting a little bit more of that seam allowance off so I could really see what I was doing and try and blend those fabrics together. But if you want that seam allowance, that's totally okay. My fabric was very stretchy so I wasn't too worried about cutting that excess off. And then I went in with a needle and thread and I stitched it kind of in a ladder type stitch so I would go from one side to the other. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing here but I'm just pulling my needle through, pulling it nice and tightly and then going back to the other side. I did this the whole way down and as I was going I tried to make sure that I was blending that seam in and making sure it was nice and straight because you can still see the seam at the back even when I'm finished. I just wanted to make sure that it looked as tidy as possible. With the last stitch in place I went back in with my scissors and I just snipped ever so slightly a tiny little bit of that excess fabric off where the two pieces join together and I use my hands to kind of fluff up the fabric a bit just to hide the seam a little bit more. And once again the nature of this fabric is so forgiving you can kind of just blend the fibers together which I really really liked. It's such an easy fabric to work with. If you are going to use a different fabric I would recommend not using like a repeating pattern because I think that might make it a bit more difficult. Something simple will definitely be a lot easier for you. Anyway, with that done, as you can see here, what I'm doing is doing the exact same process, but on the other side, stapling the side down and then pulling those pieces of fabric together, cutting the excess and sewing it up. And can we for a second appreciate how much of this excess fabric came off and the difference that it makes on the seam? Look at that and look at all that fluff flying everywhere. I'm going to be vacuuming that up for weeks. Fluffy chair progress. We finished the back. As you can see, I lined the seams up with the inside corner of the legs. Now I've got to do the same thing for the front where the arms are. So once again, we're just going to pull it, snip it and sew it. I think I'm going to do the seam on the outer edge here. So sit back, relax and enjoy the montage. Sorry to interrupt this montage, but as you can see, I've pinned this set of fabric and I had quite an extra chunk here, so I've done a second one here. Shouldn't take too long. I'm just gonna trim them up and sew them in place. Okay, so I'm done with chair number one. Let me show you what it looks like. This is how it turned out. I'm actually really, really pleased with it. I could do a tidying up the edges a little bit, but I'll do that before I take it downstairs. But yeah, this is, this is what it looks like. And this is it from the side. Let's put it back downstairs and see what it looks like. Okay, now we can move on to the next type of chair. Everything in my room is covered in a thin layer of fluff from the last one. I've cleaned the frame pretty quickly to get rid of any dust and I think this one should be a lot easier, touch wood, because I'm just going to do a lot of wrapping and not too much stapling. 
we're gonna do this one in the pink so let's do it first i folded the fabric straight down the middle and cut it in half to make sure i had exactly the same amount of fabric for each chair making sure there was going to be no surprises later down the line and then because this was lined with some fleece i had to cut out all of the fleece bits which actually took me a really really long time for some reason maybe my scissors are not sharp enough once that was done, I took my piece of fluffy pink fabric and I draped it over my chair and I started by tucking it in at the front. I think the front of your chair, whatever your chair looks like, is going to be the most seen and the most important part. So I would always start there first to make sure you don't have any surprises. If you've got a little bit of excess fabric, you'd rather it be at the back where it's not going to be seen as often, I hope. So as you can see here, what I'm doing is I'm just tucking that fabric underneath the cushion that's already there. This cushion was actually attached at the front and the back, so there was loads of space to go in around and sort of tuck the piece of fabric around without it, you know, moving and going anywhere. So it's really, really, really simple project. There were just a few places like this little corner here that were a little bit more difficult because it was a chat. <laughs> excuse me it was attached to the wooden frame a little bit awkwardly but we just kept folding and hoping for the best as you can see at the bottom there's this wire frame between the cushion and the ground essentially so that helped me tuck the fabric into place and let it stay there and then I was able to fix up the back of the chair, which was once again, very, very simple. I think this is really gonna depend on the shape of whichever chair you pick to upholster. It might be much more difficult. It might be really simple to do. My one recommendation is if you use staples to only use them to staple into the base of a chair, if it's got like a wooden base, don't try and do it around any bits of the chair that you're going to see too often. And if you are worried about things slipping around you can do what I did here and add a very very simple running stitch I did this on the front and the back just to give it a little bit more stability I'm adding that to the original upholstery but it's so simple to go in through the back and just cut all the stitches out it's not permanent but it gives a little bit more support to all of your hard work and we are done with the pink one i've got one more to do still but as you can see this was so easy it was almost too easy i just took the fabric and wrapped it around the original cushion it's so tight at the back and underneath that it didn't need much else to fix it in place but as you saw earlier i did add a running stitch and attached it to the fabric underneath which can be easily seen picked off and I did it at the back just to give it a little bit of extra stability. I love this pink colour. I'm so pleased with how it turned out. I've got to finish the other one and put them back and then I can show you what they look like. Okay, all of the chairs are finally finished. So let me show you how these pink ones turned out. Okay, so that is everything for today's faux furniture upcycle project. I hope you enjoyed it. I know this kind of fluffy fabric is very on trend right now, but it's kind of like Marmite. You either love it or you hate it. If you do hate it, I do hope you at least still got some tips and ideas about how you could do something similar, maybe with a completely different fabric. It really didn't cost me very much to give all three chairs a completely new look, and I'm really, really pleased with them. And the best thing is, it's not permanent. So with all of that being said, thank you so much for watching. Happy upcycling and I'll see you next time. Bye.